Joanne Folletta is one of a small number of women who serve as major American orchestra conductors, a number that is even more minute on the international stage where Maestro Folletta also conducts. In fact, she was one of the first women to attend the prestigious Juilliard School of Music expressly to study to become a conductor. While Joanne Folletta's place in the world of classical music is clearly founded on her remarkable skills and her extraordinary talents, she is fully aware of the significance of her gender in the classical musical world, which she notes as highly traditional and very slow to change. It's a life lesson that Joanne Folletta learned early on at Juilliard. I had one teacher who was still a dear friend of mine, George Mester. And uh, George had never taught a woman to conduct. Well, he took his role, of course, very seriously, and he was very attentive to the differences between me and my, as the only woman in the class and my male colleagues. Uh, and it was just differences in terms of a natural authority. And he helped me realize that women sometimes were brought up or, you know, felt not entitled to authority. and. and and he sensed that I was undermining my natural leadership by uh, doing things that my male colleagues didn't seem to have to do. Uh, have a subtle sense of apology, let's say, and how you phrase things to the orchestra, corrections that you made, um, a sense of understanding that you had to be in charge. That was your job. It was uh, not a privilege, it was a responsibility. And I think in helping me understand that that being a conductor was an enormous responsibility and one that I took very seriously enabled me to find a way of using a natural leadership or natural uh, authority in a positive way and not be frightened of that. And I think that I, I've, many women struggle with that, the, the, the issue of uh, uh, being in a position where, where you ask people to do things. Uh, and I learned a great deal from George about uh, why it's important to find a comfort level in that. My recall of our interview when we did talk about this was that he told you something along the lines of, you cannot ask like a woman, you must demand like a man. Is that relatively he close? Must, you know, I think he was in, in a way a little bit more sensitive to differences. He's very intelligent and, and, and very lovely person. But um, yes, I think he would point out the differences that my male colleagues would tell the orchestra, start from letter B. And I would say, uh, let's please start from letter B. But always with a subtle sense of apology that perhaps is inherent in our growing up as, as women. Uh, and sometimes I would look down at my score rather than looking a player in the eye. Body language would indicate uh, a subtle discomfort with asking or demanding for things, uh, demanding things. And, and all of these things he helped me see were actually either subconsciously or consciously undermining the authority that I needed to conduct the orchestra. You absolutely had to have that because you were making decisions and leading a group of sometimes a hundred people. Is that something that you still have to concentrate on or have you gotten to a level in your career where it's natural now to be a conductor? I think a lot has become natural in, in, in working with orchestras and in recognizing that responsibility that you need to to be in a kind of control, allowing a lot of space for people, of course, to be themselves. I mean, my responsibility as a conductor is creating the best environment I can, but I have to take that responsibility. So I think I've become much more comfortable with asking, suggesting, uh, pointing things in a different direction, uh, presenting uh, other options to people to try. Uh, but I still am aware, always, that uh, women might have a different style, a different way of doing things, which can be positive. Women sometimes are tend to be more inclusive in the process, um, and I think that the sense of that is important. I mean, one can't really be inclusive in, a, in an orchestra in terms of asking everyone what they think about what should be the tempo here, or it, should I ask for more trouble or not? No, you have to make those decisions. But the inclusiveness and recognizing that every single person in that orchestra is vital to the success of the concert and is a great artist in his or her own right. That's and statistically, from what I've been able to find in information, the number of percentage of women that are conductors in the United States ranges around 12%, and internationally that number drops to about 8%. Do you think that there's a particular reason why there aren't more women conductors? 
I think the reason why they aren't is that it's been for so long a male-based profession. And the music world, the classical music world, is very conservative. And things change so slowly. It took a long time for the orchestras to change their composition from all men to now perhaps edging towards half and half. Uh, even even soloists for a long time were largely men. So the composers are still largely men on our season brochures. Um, it's changed so slowly, and perhaps conducting is the last part of that to change, because the sense of authority in the past was, was that a conductor had limitless, arbitrary authority, and could really abuse those that power. That doesn't happen anymore. But I think the idea when people think of a conductor, they still think of someone like Ottore Toscanini, who would fire people at will and break the tongs and throw temper tantrums and and scream at people. Um, it, we wouldn't do that any, anymore, but, but there's still this image of the conductor as a male autocrat that lingers in one's mind. It's definitely changed. Right. By the virtue of the fact that you are a woman conductor, you are setting a standard. You are giving other women the image that we need to have, that it is possible. But do you feel any pressure either from the industry or from yourself, within yourself, to do anything to encourage women to become conductors? Or is that not part of your responsibility? Well, I, I do think it's my responsibility to help women who need help. And if, who, if they are studying conducting, I get calls and letters and emails so often from women saying, I have a problem, can I talk to you about it? Or what advice would you have about what I should do uh, in terms of my concert dress? Or if, if for anything ranging from dress to programs to board development, um, and, and I, I think it is a responsibility to help anyone who, who needs that. And so, a lot of times it's young men too, but, but women especially feel comfortable, they say, having a woman to talk to about a specific problem that they're having. So yes, I think, it, I, I think we do have a responsibility to help women to pursue this profession.